Hey there. A couple weeks back, I made a video talking about how Washington, D.C. had won the war in Syria. The video laid out how all the actors that are typically depicted as winning the war in Syria, from Russia to Iran to Assad himself, had actually lost, and lost big. My fear is that my government will take its destruction of Syria as a model going forward. The video then closed with what I thought was the central point I was trying to make. Washington, D.C. has won the war in Syria. The United States has not. The comments have made it clear that I didn't do a very good job communicating this central point of mine. A lot of people seem to think that I was saying that the U.S. government's destruction of Syria was somehow good for the U.S. people or good for the United States. Uh, that's the exact opposite of what I think. The U.S. government's victory in Syria has been terrible for the people of the United States and the people of the world at large. And in this video, I will hopefully do a better job of communicating that. Let's start on a smaller scale and then draw the wider picture. First off, Syria has lost half a million people, and more than half of the population of the entire country has been displaced. The suffering the Syrians have gone through has been incalculable, and tragically, it's been pointless. All of it could have been avoided. The Assad regime was always vicious, but as autocrats go, Bashar Assad circa 2010 was nowhere near as bad as at least three 2018 U.S. allies. In 2010, he could still pitch himself as the nice guy successor to his brutal father. If it weren't for the war, he might even have been gone by now. People don't talk about this enough, but in 2010, the Middle East was in amazing shape. Even Iraq was looking kind of functional. Syria was posting growth rates around 6% a year, and Assad was tentatively beginning to open his economy. In September 2009, Syria achieved visa-free travel to the economic powerhouse to its north, Turkey, which posted 11.5% GDP growth in 2011 alone. Assad was on the same road that has moved whole continents from dictatorship to democracy in my lifetime. We know exactly how to solve problems like Assad, and it doesn't involve giving billions of dollars worth of weapons to rebels. Syria could have been Bulgaria by now. Instead, we decided to turn it into Afghanistan. I've got a whole video on this issue if you're not already too depressed. Assad is now likely to die before he gives up power. He doesn't really have any other choice. So he's just gonna get more brutal and the war is just gonna continue. <sighs> Let's look at the rest of the region. It may be hard to remember now, but as of 2011, Turkey and the United States were the best of friends, and they had been for almost 70 years. I really do think that that's the main reason why Turkey was willing to sign up to the Get Assad project back in 2011. People have other theories, but they've never really made much sense to me. Pretty much the only thing the old and new elites in Turkey agreed on was that friendship with the United States was a good thing. If you've read a news story about Turkey in the past five years, you can probably tell that the relationship is more strained now. You've probably heard about the fall into authoritarianism led by then Prime Minister and now President Erdogan. At the risk of my future vacations in Turkey, I will admit that this is true. Erdogan is a real problem. But a lot of these news stories leave out the main reason Turkey is so screwed up. It's not Erdogan, it's not creeping Islam. Uh, these things are factors, but mostly it's the war in Syria. The inability of the world media and the US media in particular to grasp that a massive war on the southern border might help to destabilize a country just blows my freaking mind. Millions of refugees, dozens of terror attacks, now close to a decade of ongoing military and intelligence operations? Uh, you think that might help tip a country into authoritarianism? I've got a video describing this dynamic as well. 
Moving on to ISIS and what it has done to Iraq and Syria over the past three and a half years. The question, did the United States create ISIS, is a lot like the question, did Saudi Arabia do 9-11? These are questions that will never be fully answered, but they don't have to be. Because we know for sure that 9-11 would not have happened without the educational and foreign policies of the Saudi government, and we know for sure that there would never have been an Islamic State without the vast ungovernment territory in Syria that the United States paid to open up. This probably wasn't what the United States intended, but it's certainly what the United States got. I could go on about the region and talk about the extraordinary disruption that millions of refugees have brought to countries like Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey, but I think you get the picture. The Get Assad project has taken a Middle East region that was maybe, finally, kinda, just possibly turning the corner into something worthwhile and destroyed it utterly. Oh, and it may also have destroyed the U.S. relationship with Turkey, our most important Muslim ally. You can find out about that in the last video in detail. All right, let's move on to Europe. In 2014, the EU was already in rough shape. The financial crisis had illustrated what a mistake the euro currency was, and Western Europeans were getting sick of Eastern Europeans taking their low-wage jobs. In the 2014 European Parliament elections, nationalist anti-EU parties achieved success that was then unprecedented. Back then, I made a pretty optimistic video on the topic. I argued that 2009 through 2014 had been the worst five-year period in the EU's history. The nationalists hadn't really done that well, all things considered, and things were certain to get better. A few months after I made that video, the refugee crisis really got started. By 2015, U.S.-funded jihadists had taken large swaths of Syria, and refugees from that country and many others started flooding into Europe. Right-wing governments were swept to power in places like Poland and were strengthened everywhere. Most importantly, the refugee crisis and ISIS attacks in Europe helped to push the Brexit movement over the top. That's not a very large percentage. The European Union has now lost one of its most powerful members, and the refugee issue is fraying relationships across the continent. The Syrian war took the EU's five-year crisis and turned it into a ten-year crisis. It remains to be seen whether or not the European Union will survive. A united and prosperous Europe would have been useful for the challenges we should have spent the past two decades focusing on. The world is in a time of great peril, but also great opportunity. 200 years of European and U.S. dominance is fading away. It's just possible that we as a world could use the institutions we have now and turn them into something that everyone can get on board with. Rising powers like China or India or the African Union could take up leadership positions alongside the United States and Europe, and we could pull something off that nobody's really been able to manage before. We could build a world of true peace and prosperity without coercion. I, I swear I can still just kind of see this future out there. It's still just possible, and it's beautiful. This is what we should have been trying to build for the last two decades. Instead, in Iraq and Syria, the U.S. government has been using the United Nations and other institutions like toilet paper in order to stick it to a couple pissant petrostates. My country really needs to look great and good right now, but our involvement in the Middle East over the past 17 years makes us look very, very small. The United States needs to use the time we have left on top to convince the world that our leadership and the institutions we have built are worthwhile. Instead, we've spent the time since 2001 reminding everybody just how thoughtless and brutal Western imperial domination can be. People will be throwing Iraq and Syria in our faces for decades. And they should. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, please consider clicking on the Patreon link here to find out more about my crowdfunding thing. Thanks.